are we doing? Top notch, how are you? Are we jumping straight on? Jump on. Alrighty. Okay, you want a hand? Oh good. Fuck it, man. Oi. Have a seat. You're there, I'm here. Wonderful. Alright, away we go. So you got the sea legs? You gonna be okay? I'm gonna be all right. Do I need to get you a sick bag or anything? I'll just go overboard if, uh, if I'm not feeling too good. <laughs> Hardcore, I love it. <laughs> so here we are. Very excited to sit here with you on the spoke journey. Thank you. Monaco, our background. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular, isn't it? It's quite surreal. Please, who the hell would want to live here? What, <laughs> what a dump. What a dump, what a dump. <laughs> It's, um, every time I come here, it is just so surreal to think we race between these streets, and especially on a Sunday, we do the driver's parade on the back of a truck. Yeah. And you're coming up the hill into the casino and you're looking out to the, to the harbor and you see all the yachts there, you're looking back, everybody on the balconies, yeah. and it's well, just where's like- Where's the track? We are, exactly, where is the track? And we're racing uh, on these streets, but it's- It's, it's uh, extraordinary. Yeah, it's a special one. Kings Lynn to Monte Carlo, I mean, <laughs> George, that's, tell your, us. that's your average journey, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, please. There's nothing average about you, sir. Tell me, how awesome is your life, George? Yeah, I mean, I feel incredibly fortunate for uh, for what I do. I think I spoke about this recently with somebody. I think we're so competitive, and you're in the zone so often, you sometimes forget where you are. Mm. You know, I'm waking up today, going to the track to do a job and kind of forgetting that here we are, we're in Monaco, you know, we go into the circuit by boat. I mean, this is, you know, kind of a, a thing of dreams, what I would have had you yeah. know, 10 years ago, five years ago, um, even a couple of years ago, you know, when I was uh, first in F1, I, I was going to the track my little moped, and, you know, every year it's, um, it's going in the right direction, but, so you can't lose sight of that, but equally, you know, I'm here to race, I'm here to win. Of course. And there's, there's a lot of nice things that come on the journey, but I don't really care about any of that. I care about one thing, and, and that's standing on the top step of the podium. To, to, to race in Monaco, I mean, I, I can picture a, a, a young George watching the grainy footage of Senna I'm wazzing his McLaren. I'm not, I'm not quite that well, old. On, on, you, on YouTube, I mean, on YouTube, <laughs> obviously. But, you know, I can imagine you watched that as a kid yeah. and thought, uh, one day, please, but never expecting that would actually happen, surely. Yeah, I think. I think I always believed it, to be honest. You know, somebody asked me recently about heroes, and I always felt almost a bit guilty that I didn't really have a, a standout hero. I always used to say sort of Michael Schumacher, but I always believed in myself, and I wanted to, um, you know, as a kid, I, I almost felt like I could, I could do anything. You know, there's almost quite a lot of arrogance there as a. You as gotta 11, have it. You gotta have it. As an 11-year-old kid, I thought I could, you know, fly to the moon, <laughs> and that I would just win races, and I'd be in Formula One, and I'd be world champion. And it's, you know, as easy as that. But I think, as I got older, I recognised that life's not that straightforward. Mm. To get to, you know, the top 20 in the world, um, is certainly not that easy at all. And there's a lot of compromise, uh, a lot of hard work, dedication. But I feel. Um, you know, glad for the journey I took and yeah. the, the sacrifices I made and, and wouldn't change it for the world. That's a lot of sacrifices, definitely. You have to shape your life around the F1 experience, which is why you now live here in Monaco. Uh, how are you settling in? Are you, are you making friends? Yeah, I'm loving it, to be honest. I've been here for six or seven months now. Yeah. Um, just a totally different lifestyle, waking up to the sunshine every day oh, at breakfast on the balcony, jumping in the sea daily. And it's like a routine that I never had when I was you know, a kid living in the countryside. Um, I didn't really have any of my friends around. I'm now living in a bit of a, a community. You know, previously when I lived in London, um, you know, it's slightly different as well. I love London, but you're in that big city center, yeah. a lot going on. And um, I think also being British, you know, it's, it was a little bit challenging at times when, you, when I'm out on the street with my girlfriend or something. And, uh, you know, great to see the support that we, we have. <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah, I, I really enjoy it here. Um, and I see quite a lot of the people daily, you know, I'm bumping into Alex quite often. And seeing... I saw you were on a, a double date with him recently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But no, it's, you know, it's a really nice, nice crowd here. And, um, it's probably the happiest I've been in my life ever, to be honest. And, wow. um, you know, I, I do truly think that 
that brings something to to performance because as I said you've I've kind of sacrificed so much uh, made a lot of compromises and it's not always the happiest journey of course being a Formula One driver I'm so thankful for the position I'm in but you know when my mates are out on the weekend having a good time you know they're also uh, for different reasons yeah. enjoying it and you know that was a dis decision I chose not to take and um, but I'm finding like a really happy medium now and um, as I said in a really really good place and I'd like to think it's maybe shown a little bit with uh, on track performance yeah. as well it's probably the best I've ever performed in Formula One um, so far this year in terms of pace and um, obviously the points have been a little bit unfortunate with uh, what happened in Australia but you know overall just uh, in a good place. The season you have to admit has been a bit up and down so far is that pretty much as you suspected it would be because at the end of 2022 it looked like Mercedes were catching up. Yeah it definitely did and it's certainly not what we expected I think um, you know so much hard work went into the car for this year and it's, and it's clearly not delivered what we expected and you know, Aston Martin have came from nowhere so we're now batting with two other cars whereas last year it was mainly only Ferrari and, and Red Bull but I believe in the team and you know Formula One is like a big oil tanker you know to try and turn that around that car around and get it in the right direction it's not a, a matter of moments so um, you know I know what the team are capable of and I'm, I wouldn't wish to be in any other position than where I am right now with Mercedes. I know we're only five races into the season but if you could give us a snap judgment on the 2023 car, is it better or worse than 2022? <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's better, but in terms of results, we're doing worse. So it, okay. this, this game is, this sport is all relative. You know, you could have a terrible car, but if everyone else's is a little bit more terrible than, than yours, <laughs> you're winning and happy days. So it's, um, you know, these new regulation of cars, they're not the best cars we've ever driven, they're heavier than they were three years ago. Uh, not quite as much downforce in the low speed corners. So the cars are slower, therefore they're not as nice to drive, but it's a relative game. We were promised some upgrades in Imola. Obviously that didn't happen uh, for obvious reasons. Can we expect to see them revealed here in Monaco? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Uh, will, will, will we be able to tell? Because it's a little bit of a tricky track to monitor progress in that regards, no? Yeah, I mean, you'll visually be able to tell some differences, that's for sure, but, you know, there's no silver bullets. I think, especially in Monaco, you're not going to be able to uh, to tell. I think we're going to get through this weekend and take a, a view of things in Barcelona, a bit more of a normal circuit. Yeah. Monaco's always unique. You've always seen in the past, you know, Ferrari have always been strong on street circuits. So I'm expecting them to be really strong again. Monaco's an outlier, so we won't really uh, judge too much from this weekend. Okay. But, um, yeah, we'll see next, next weekend in Barcelona. Uh, big changes within the team. Uh, James Allison and uh, Mike Elliott doing that job swap in order to turn to winning ways. Uh, have you seen any improvement so far with that scenario? No, I mean, you, you don't ever see changes overnight. I mean, James was always um, involved to a small degree. Mike was, was obviously leading the team in that regard. But I think it, it's come at the, the benefit of all of us. You know, we've now Mike's still working uh, on the Formula One project. He is probably the most, one of the most exceptional engineers I've ever come across in my whole life. But with James's sort of experience and leadership skills, we've now got him back as well. So we've now got the pair of them I leading mean, us and pushing us forward. Formidable so, pairing. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's why I said, you know, you always want to be in the winning car, you always want to be in the winning team, but I'm here for the long haul and I believe in Mercedes and I believe in the team we've got and I know we'll be back. So. You know, it's not going to be this weekend, it won't be next weekend. Okay. It will be at some point in the near future. Um, but as I said, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, I haven't had that much uh, face time with Mike Elliott, but I have with James. And every time I speak to him, I always think, I think I'm talking to a genius yeah, here. He's I know. so clever, it's bonkers. Yeah, I definitely feel a little bit uh, lacking, <laughs> it's lacking intimidating. education when I speak with James. Um, <laughs> You know, that's why he, he is where he is and who he is, yeah. you know, he's, he's exceptional. He's got such a way of getting the, um, all the team working in the right direction and leading that group of people. Um, yeah, exceptional engineer, so um, glad to see he's sort of back in full force. Is it a little bit annoying for you that 
You've worked so hard to get where you are. Everybody wanted that seat. You got it. Unfortunately, it <laughs> seems like it's the worst Mercedes seat in a decade. Yeah. Is that frustrating for you? Look, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not frustrating. Of course it's frustrating. You always want to go into a new year and have the fastest car possible. But, you know, you can't um, you know, spit your dummy out when there's things out of your control. You know, you're not going to be able to win every single year. And you look over time, you know, Max spent, I don't know, four or five years at Red Bull where he won three, four, five races in that whole, good, good whole point. period. Good point. And now he's got his chance to shine. So. It's the way the, the game works. Um, you know, when I look at somebody like Fernando, I think I've definitely got a good 15 years left in me. So, yeah, and then some, um, probably. Exactly. So, you know, my time will come, and I'm not just going to throw these years away because I'm pushing as hard as ever, trying to push for Team Four, keep on developing, and and that's all I can do. So, um, but th there are some incredible positives. Yeah, you might not have the car underneath you but you're doing something nobody thought was possible. You're out qualifying Lewis Hamilton on pace. You know, you're, you're doing it. That must be absolutely delicious. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I'll take it. Of course, I, I prefer to be on the, the front end rather than uh, the, the back end of a performance. But as I said, I'm here to win. And if, you, if you're here to win, you've got to beat everybody. And, it's also why I'm in such a fortunate position because, you know, I'm going up against the best ever. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I, I said to Lewis recently, you saved my career because if he left after the 2021 season and I joined in 2022, people would have been pointing the finger at me <laughs> saying, you're the reason why we're not quick. <laughs> what and, did he say to that? Uh, he's like, yeah, you're right. He said, I probably need to pay him or something. <laughs> <laughs> so glad I could help out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Um, as I said, things happen for a reason. I'm happy with um, the team I've got around me, and, and it will come. It will come, I've, I've got no doubt. What do you think about Lewis going to Ferrari? That's, that won't happen. It's that happening. Way. It's happening. It's, it's, it's happening. That's what... I've, you heard it, you read I've, it in Daily I've, Mail, was I've, it? I've <laughs> seen it in one of my visions. You've seen it, okay. The, the ghost of Enzo Ferrari came to me and he said, Lewis, he are coming to Ferrari. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's happening, George. We can't oh, stop it at this no, point. We, no, if you say it's happening, then I'm going to have to believe you. But uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't know what would happen before that. But who knows? Maybe, maybe we're proved wrong. Hey, stranger you know? things have happened in this sport. Stranger things have happened. Maybe you know, next year, you know, when he left McLaren to join Mercedes. Yeah. Who knows? Thought, what the hell is he doing? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe he knows something we don't. But mm. um, no, I, that that won't be happening. I'm sure. Focusing on Red Bull for a moment. Um, can anybody beat them this season? And might it be uh, this chap here? I mean, it was such a shame in Australia with how things panned out, because I truly think with that safety car that came out, which then obviously turned into a red flag, mm. we would have had a real shot of winning that race. Then obviously we, we retired in the end. So uh, again, that was not destined to be. But, you know, I don't think anybody's going to beat them on pure pace. Maybe, maybe this or Singapore is going to be the only sort of okay. race weekend where um, maybe Ferrari have a shot because they seem to be street circuit specialists. Um, they seem to do something better than the rest of us on these types of tracks. I and mean, then it's obviously difficult to overtake. But we need to see once we, we get to Barcelona and yeah. we're bringing these up, upgrades to the car. You know, I said at the start of the year, no one's going to be beating Red Bull. Um, Oh, are we... Uh... Oh, look at that. <laughs> you need a backup. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, you know, they're, they're, they've clearly done something exceptionally well and um, it's going to be difficult to, to catch up, but let's see, let's see in the coming races and uh, maybe it was a bit premature of me to say that they'll, they'll win every single race, but for so. now they, they look to be the dominant ones. You and Max had a bit of a tiff in uh, Baku. Are you all friends again? I suppose you have to be. You're kind of neighbours living here together. Um, yeah, you know, it's... I think we all say stuff in the heat of the moment. Um, it's part of the game. And I think I saw an interview, actually, of... It was in a press conference of Lewis and Sebastian. And I think 
Lewis actually said the same word about Max, uh, Max said about me. Okay. And somebody said, like, uh, one of the, the, the standard journalist questions, you know, if you put a microphone on football players every single time they've been tackled or in the heat of the yeah. moment, you know, you'd be hearing all sorts it of would, things. It would just be one long beep. Exactly. Beep. So it's, yeah. you know, we're, we're driving around the track, you know, over 200 miles an hour, we're fighting for everything we've got. And, you know, you get out of the car, you're physically drained and, you know, mentally drained as well. You know, you've got to say things that maybe you don't quite mean or um, that are in the heat of the moment. And I'm sure he's got no regrets, but, it's, you know, I don't really care either. So, uh, part of the game, I, uh, I laughed it off and um, here we go again. It's dumb. Um, I'm, unfortunately, my time with you is, 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 is over. Brilliant. It's time to much. deliver you to uh, terra firma, George. We need to jump, jump, jump on uh, here somewhere. You can jump that. Yeah, I can jump it. I'm just, I don't really want to get wet. That's the only thing. All right. Good talk. Thank you very much. Always Always pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Go well this weekend. Cheers. Thank you. I'm going to take this mic off. I am a little bit toasty now. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you later, guys.